Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984 and uh, today we have a small mailbag to begin with and uh, this is kind of open so you can already see it's from a friend of mine so NEC USB 2.0 card that I want to use in my Mac so thank you Janne And the next one is from me, so that's kind of cheating, but, well, who, who's counting? Uh, it actually arrived with this package at the same time, so I decided to include it. And I'm pretty sure it's uh, another USB 2.0 card, NEC. I actually ordered this myself, like I said. Uh, but due to human malware, I wasn't sure it would show up. It it was it was delivered past the uh, last uh, due date. So I got the other one from a friend who pitched in there. So I hope one of these will work in my Mac. That's my plan to have them in have one of them in my G4. And uh, what I'm really looking forward to is this package here from uh, from Germany. From one of my, my few viewers. So. Let's see. It's well packaged. Supposed to be a surprise in there. I, I know what the main things are that I uh, wanted. So let's see here. There's something in here. Let's see what that is. Okay. So here we have a graphics card. Oh, let's open it. This is a GeForce 2 MX, uh, so like I already had, but this is the twin view version, so it can actually display two different um, desktops as uh, two RAM decks. So you can have uh, you don't need to mirror the screen, so you can actually have two different ones. So I could uh, run my main monitor and maybe a projector on this one if I get an adapter for Apple, and it has twice the amount of RAM, so 64 megabyte. So that's pretty nice. So, if it actually will benefit my performance, I have no idea yet. But uh, I suppose we, I suppose we have to try that out. So that's nice. Supposed to be the real good thing in here. There's something else. I said there was a surprise, surprise in there, and I think this is the surprise because it doesn't fit fit the size description. Let's see, here's something here. See, but uh, if you can, you probably figure out what it is. Right. Here we have a CPU. This is supposed to be a Quicksilver CPU, 800, let's see here, 867 megahertz. Uh, it's apparently overclocked, so let's see here. Should be a bod shop somewhere. Yep, over here. Let's see if that focuses. Uh, it has apparently, according to 
the one who gave it to, gave it to me been overclocked to 933 on a Quicksilver. So there are some parts missing, he told me, and so on and so on. I don't know who did this, but uh, well, there were parts burnt off. But uh, so this uh, this is uh, running at 933 on a Quicksilver, so multiply 7. I have to redo this, fix this here, and put it into a multiply of 8, so I get an 800. And the difference between this and what I have is basically the same, but uh, this thing has L3 cache, and it looks like it has 2 megabytes, so that's why I wanted this thing. And also check, my motherboard doesn't support, support a duals, so I can't really run that without changing the motherboard. So, and I'm going for like 800 to fit in with my uh, PCs of the era, around 99-2000, so... This should be pretty fitting to my kind of build. So this is this is what we're gonna fix. I'm gonna fix uh, this here and install it in my Mac later. And let's see here. I think, like I said, it was supposed to be a couple of surprises. Oh, probably two here. So let's see. And it's probably Mac related, so. Uh, almost suspected RAM here used by the field. So let's see what it is. I suppose it's uh, RAM out of a Mac or at least Mac compatible. Because uh, it was supposed to be all Mac related. This user has built his own uh, like Dream Power PC G4, I think it was. Uh, mirror, mirror Drive. So. It was giving away leftovers. So, kind of thankful because I couldn't find the CPU I wanted on eBay. Yeah. I, there, were, there were plenty of uh, 733s on eBay without L3, but trying to find one with L3 that was shipped to Sweden was mm, let's say difficult. So, what do we have here? Chinese, I can't read that. Yeah, something Chinese branded. It's Samsung memory. 3200, so this is DDR512. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a Mac with that. But uh, yeah, I have plenty of systems to do use that. Mm, 7 nanoseconds. This should be like 133 megahertz memory. Maybe 143? 6 nanoseconds if you can find that. Uh, this is Infineon, but if you can find ships that are branded M-Tech and it says dash 6 at the end, then you got 166 MHz SD RAM. Doesn't mean the stick can do it, because they usually program for 133 and the PCB might not be able to cope with it. But I would say like 25% of them would cope with 166. And all of them would do 150 plus at CAS 2. So. But this is Samsung, looks like 130, 143 MHz. PSD RAM, 2.3 volt, yep, 133, 512, is this 512 megabytes? Could be. It's definitely common in the Mac. Infineon, uh, Samsung, uh, Kingston. Kingston is really good, it just works in everything. I actually got that for my main PC now, a couple of Kingstons. I use that, I always buy Kingston if I can. I don't know. I don't know about the RMOS stats these days, but back in the day, like the like 19, uh, 2013, 2014, I checked, uh, there was a webpage you can check the RMOS stats on RAM and Kingston always had, had the lowest of everyone. So if you want trouble free, <laughs> I suppose Kingston is your best chance. So this is Samsung, probably the same as this. So that's DDR, so that's probably out of some like an. Is that. Does the MDD use DDR? Probably does. And this is probably out of like a. Quicksilver maybe. So yeah, thanks for the RAM. That's gonna be useful. I definitely have computers that can use more SD RAM. I actually have a lot of DDR, but uh, good SD RAM is uh, like big modules, 512 and uh, 215, 512. I don't have that many. Got plenty of boring ones. So something else. Could we guess graphics card or something else? I don't know. Very suspicious EC packing, but I suppose it's a Faraday's cage, so it should work. <laughs> should work. 
Oh, this is like a Scassi card actually. That's pretty funny. Because I wish I could thinking about Scassi the other day. And uh, I do have uh, I do have an Adaptic 19160. It also has the 68 pin plus the 50. Which is nice because you run your hard drive there, you run your CD ROM or DVD there. And usually, they, 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 they can be like the same bus, but they, but physically here they're different, so they can run different clocks, which means it, this one won't hamper this one. So maybe the same goes for this card, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, I'm not sure exactly what sp speeds and stuff this could be. I actually pulled one out of the quick uh, the salt that I had, but that was like just I think it was just external, the one I pulled out because it had an onboard CD room. So I and I seen the picture of uh, the one I got the system from, and he had like this big optical drive. I think was a external one. So I think he bought that to fix this problem. But this is obviously much more useful because you can actually add uh, scassi drives internally. Now I won't have space for this in my Mac if I put the USB card in, so that's an issue. Or I have to take my Voodoo 2 out, but I love my Voodoo 2 in my Macs now. I suppose I have to figure something out with this. Like I said, I don't know what the speed here is. I suspect it's maybe 40 megabyte per second. It's probably not the U160, U320. Because I'm not familiar with this chipset here. Might be super common, but I'm, uh, the only thing I have is adaptic. I got a couple of those and so on. And then I got a couple of few ultra wide cards that are not adaptic, uh, deck cards and stuff. So that's usually what I have. So I'm not uh, a card I'm not familiar with. But I suppose it's a Mac card, so. Yeah, that's nice. I do like SCSI. And I do have uh, like two, uh, probably three SCSI systems, I think, something like that. So that's it for the mailbag, and it was actually a nice mailbag. So, next thing is to do to actually put some of these things into a Mac. So, what I have to do, I have to remove this uh, board shoe. <coughs> and uh, we have three missing pads, one here, but that doesn't matter, we don't need that one. But we do need these two here. And this resistor here needs to go, and we need one here above it and then where the two pads are missing so we have to try to repair this because having two resistors one here second from the bottom and third from the bottom will give us multiple of eight right now it's set to seven which is on a qs 933 megahertz so we want eight for my salt tube because there's an 800 bus uh, a 100 megahertz bus so i want 800 megahertz so i'm going to remove all of this first So, the way this usually works is just this wire here, this trace, is all the ground here. And these are the multipliers, so... 
uh, 1k resistor over here and these will pull pull it down to ground and those resistor, resistors are like 1000 1, ohms or so 1k so we need to add one here and one here These are slightly bigger than the original, but that's what I have, and it usually works fine. Now for the next one, since we don't have any pads, we have to do it another way. The pads missing here isn't that big of a deal since it's a, such a simple circuit. So my plan was to put this next to the other one. Either like uh, this orientation up to the missing pad here or on the diagonal here. I think we go. Diagonal if it fits. Then we do a jumper wire. I think that should work because then we do a jumper wire from here. Let's see, it should go from there to over here because these are all connected. So this one goes to that one, and this one goes to that one.
now let's check it out with the multimeter. So I'm sure we don't have any weird stuff going on like shorts. Expect this to be grounded. Yeah, zero ohms there. Expect a thousand over here. We have a thousand. And we have a thousand. Fully nothing in between. Nothing is at yeah, two thousand. And that adds up actually. Kind of. Since that goes through both of them. So yeah, that, that checks out as far as I can. So all we have to do is clean this up and test it out. So it's all, the, all nice and clean now. And uh, check it again and it all checks out. So pretty confident that this should work if there's nothing else wrong and uh, the CPU is said to be working so let's hope that's the case I took the old one out and here's the new one and as you can see there's no L3 cache on this one so otherwise they're pretty similar uh, so yep yeah. so we're gonna put uh, the power adapter for 12 volts onto the new CPU and then install it. So, something I was thinking about and I've seen other people talk about doing is add some thermal, some cooling to the L3 cache. Apparently it's not the most reliable cache ships to begin with. I do have fairly good CPU cooling now, but I figure adding some thermal pads around here. Yeah. The motherboard doesn't have like any power or anything, it's uh, all on the CPU board, so the motherboard runs pretty cool. It's not the best heat conductor, but it contains copper, which means it conducts heat fairly well. So I did some measurements and 4mm of pads here, so 2 2 millimeters. so I didn't have 4. That should uh, suffice for the bottom L3 cache here. It's a little bit squishy. Pretty soft pads these, I bought them on eBay, like most people probably do. So, on the top side here, I estimate about one millimeter. Thing is with like, uh, this, they probably flip ship the, the, the ship, so the actual heat is, e you know, the top of the ship is not the best heat conductor, it's actually, most of the heat goes into this board here. But it doesn't mean heat doesn't go up, so. Trying to pull some of the heat out of it just to make them last longer, be more reliable. Now, the thing here on top, obviously, you can just, can't just drop head on there and hope it works because if it's too thin, it won't make contact. If it's too thick, it could lift the cooler off the uh, core of the CPU. That's even worse, so I don't want to do that. I have measured, and it should be like a millimeter here, it should be ideal. I do have, I have some pre-cut 1mm pads for RAM, those RAM chips are slightly smaller, but like I said, these chips don't conduct heat the best on this side of the ship, so it's, it's a little bit small, but the ship should be in the middle there, that will help some heat, conduct some heat over to the uh, CPU cooler is the plan. So. I also figure a smaller pad would be easier to compress, so if it's slightly thicker, my measurement should be like 0.8 or something. If it's slightly thick, it should squeeze out a little bit. So I'd rather have a slightly small one than not too big and thick one that pushes everything up from the die of the CPU. So 
it's just uh, ordinary MX4 paste is more than good enough for this CPU. So that's the new CPU installed, so all we have to do now is try it and see if it works. So let's give it a go. It shines straight off the bat, that's nice to hear. It's going to be really interesting to see what this supports now. Sorry for the noise, I'm just trying to get to my keyboard and mouse. Hopefully I can get rid of these stupid cache errors. I've got none now, but it's a little bit random. You should pop up, but... Uh, system profiling, let's go there and see what you find out. Well, there's just 2 megabytes of L3 cache down here, that's really nice. Really nice. So, so far uh, it seems to be working. What is the clock frequency? Can we see that? Yeah, it's an 800, so everything is correct. That's really nice. So, all left to do, I suppose, is to run some benchmarks, and I figure I do that and put together some graphs and we we'll go over them later. So, we're gonna install the GeForce 2MX Twin View 64 megabyte. And the USB 2.0 card. They were actually identical, those 2.0 cards. So. to replace the USB 2.0 card with the second one because it didn't want to post, it got stuck halfway through the shine and I didn't get any further than that. So when I want to try the other card, that seems to work. Uh, I've tried an optical unit and it mounts the DVD or CD-ROM and I can uh, use it. So And it also boots from it. So the one that didn't work was the one I bought from eBay like two weeks ago or something to two weeks ago. The other one I got from my friend, they look identical, but that has gold plated uh, PCI connectors and pins and mine has silver. So there's a slight, a couple of changes that and just uh, print the differs, otherwise they look identical, so I don't know why mine didn't work. Mm. Up here is the... Uh, optical unit I connected, the Buffalo optical drive. So, yeah. <laughs> we can also see the card is here. And the thing is, it says card room not available. And the previous owner of the <laughs> CPU I got that I showed you, that is now in the system, uh, he also has this issue with the NEC cards. Uh, the reason why you use an NEC card from Lion's Den is that they're most compatible with uh, OS 9 and OS 8. And from my own experience on a PC they are the go-to cards too. But there seems to be a problem with the ROM, ROM on these things. Uh, it might cause the whole issue with a slight issue. It's, it's sleep doesn't work. This device doesn't support sleep, so you can't set your OS 9 or OS X in, into sleep. It just gets stuck, powered on, and if you hit the keyboard and mouse, it will... Uh, OS 9 will power on and complain that one device didn't support sleep. OS X for me has just got stuck permanently in uh, like a half sleep mode. So I turned off sleep on both of them because uh, 
it's a retro machine. I mean, if I use it, I use it. If I don't, I turn it off. So it's not a big deal, but it could be worth noting. So I had some issues both with SATA and uh, USB card now from eBay from uh, basically these cheap uh, China cards they make these days you can buy instead of like what you would find back in like 15, 20 years ago. So I suppose like the IT Sonnet made cards and stuff like that if you can find one of those that probably support everything out of the box properly. The main reason we are here is to look at the difference between our D4 800 with cache, L3 cache, and without L3 cache, and also see how that, for the fun of it, compares to like a similar clocked PC, and configuration wise, similar PC. Because I happen to have scores from that laying around from a few tests I did a couple of weeks ago. So I ran a Geekbench here, it shows an 11.3% uplift in the score, so that's 443 points versus 298 points. Then we got Halo. This is the first version of Halo, I think, for only power PC because it does much faster for me than the universal binary. And we can see a 26.4% uplift or about 5.5 frames. We can also see that I have compared the GeForce 2 MX 32 MB version and 64 MB. And I actually re, -re ran this test once more, but with the texture going from medium to high because before I I recall high dropping frames, but with extra memory, I could actually I got that 25 to 98 again, actually. So that's that's basically the same score. And you, as I said, you might be able to go higher in the textures without any loss. So that's interesting. Other than that, the Eforce 2 MX 64 megabyte didn't make much of a difference in terms of performance. So you can see here the. 800 without L3 cache is about 50.6 FPS and Unreal Tournament 99. This is 800 by 600, so a 16 bit color. And with the L3 cache, we ended up around 65, 65.11, so up 28.7%. No real difference to, with the 64 megabyte E4 Show MX. With uh, the Inquake 3, we see some really impressive gains. I went from 80.7 frames up to some. Almost 120. I was looking at uh, here about 119.5, and I actually got higher than that at some point. But we're talking digits, so that's a 47.8% uplift, so equivalent of almost another 400 megahertz. And under here we got a Pentium 3 running at uh, it's a 133 bus CPU. I didn't have a hundred, but I set the memory to 100 to artificially limit it. So the interesting thing is that. Uh, Pentium 2 Copper Mine has the same amount of L2 cache internally at the same speed as the L2 cache less uh, G4, obviously the one with L3 cache, so interesting here to see the big performance bump, but uh, EDTEC 3, the engine, is well known to respond well to memory bandwidth, that's one of the reasons why the Pentium 4 actually did pretty well in that game compared to other CPUs, while being behind in most other, type, in most other game engines of the time. So. We're basically seeing the same benefit that Pension 4 does due to its RAM bus memory and 4 MS bus. We see the big gain here due to this 2 MB L3 cache offering us an almost a 50% boost in performance. So that's really nice. So if you're playing Quake 3, there's no question of what you want. You want a lot of, lot of L3, L3 cache. In Quake 2, we don't see as much gain, but we still see a lot of gains here. 26.9%, so up from 92.1 to 115.7. The 64 MB card were always like at least 3 frames behind, I don't know why. So it's for some reason not as fast, but there's the same clocks on them, so... <coughs> Maybe the, it could be some, even a software reason for this, because Quake 2 is a little bit inconsistent between runs on uh, OS 9 from compared to PC, I find. Uh, the P3800 here beats uh, all of them, though, so that's always that, but yeah, I, I really like the Quake 3 score here, it's really nice, so, so I think the conclusion is that L3 cache makes a lot of differences, 25 to almost 50 percent, and how, how that scales with internal frequency of the CPU on the really high clock G4 upgrades, I have no idea, I don't have anything like that. I did not include this in my in my benchmarks, but I wrote a small OpenGL demo. It's uh, 
Basically, I'm modeled off a PowerPC G4 350 mega GPU, and you can rotate it by clicking the left mouse button and move it around. Right click will zoom in and out. Space bar will stop the demo mode where it just rotates on an axis. F will go full screen. Uh, like I said, space bar will start the demo. You can go plus and minus also to set the resolutions. Like how big you want the window, you can also resize to anything you want. Like so. And you can go in debug mode, which gives you like frame rate. And it gives you the resolution. So now it's 640 by 480, which is what it starts up in. And we've got 117 frames here. 118, 117. With uh, the old CPU, the graphics card I had about 91 on average, uh, sometimes up to 94. So 91 to 94, and now we're up in the 116 to 118. So, yeah, it's a nice bump here too. So yeah, if you want to try this demo out and benchmark, you know, something like that, and share, you can, I'm gonna put it in the description for download and you can post your result if you want or share it with other people. So to sum this up, we can conclude that having no L3 cache is very detrimental to the performance of the G4 CPU, the 7450. So, yeah, I would recommend if you can get your hold of a CPU with L3 cache. If you don't have, it's uh, quite really worth upgrade. So yeah. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.